It's Wellness Wednesdays. It's Wellness Wednesdays. And uh, if I sound a little annoyed, it's because I have been trying to get this video right for two and a half hours now over two days. It's killing me. One, it's not therapy. This week was rough. It was on shame. I'm still feeling kind of raw from recording it. Because um, I talked about the things I'm ashamed of because... I'm talking to people about talking about shame and I can't say you should talk about your shame if I don't do it, you know, so I did it and I'm still feeling kind of raw, but also I just, uh, it's a lighter week for a change. That doesn't mean I'm not busy. It's just, it's, it's only 40 hours this week. Uh, so I'm feeling a bit foggy and out there. Uh, so forgive me, but I'm going to try this because, uh, it's, it's trans awareness week and I almost didn't do something for trans awareness week because the trans community is angry at me. Yes. It's the, you know, the, the loudest people in the community. I am both persona non grata again and another thing. Not that I ever asked to be persona grata. So there's no loss there, but they're either acting like I don't exist or they're actively hostile. Some people are still mad at me about Hogwarts legacy. Other people are mad at me about Gaza. Not what I said about Gaza. What I didn't say and they wanted me to say about Gaza. But I have some trans people in my life who are very, very important to me. And I'm making this video for them as uh, Akila, one of the trans people in my life who's very, very important to me, says activists serve the community. The community should not be serving the activists. And in, in that spirit, here we go. We're talking trust and talking about social issues, how to build trust to talk about social issues. If you like this content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K, or our men's group GoFundMe invites to the Discord go out the fifth of every month. So not a great time right now. If you don't have the money to spend, you can befriend one of our ambassadors. So the GoFundMe is like, you can donate a few bucks. But uh, if you come to Twitch, if you are active in comment sections um, and catch the eye of one of our ambassadors, you can get a Discord invite from them. We do this to confirm that these that you are a real person who is not stalking or harassing a member of the group. Um because we are a welcoming group. We can only be a welcoming group if we are a trusting group. And I treat that trust as sacred because it is. The way we discuss difficult issues, the way we talk about the, the, the rip from the headlines, gripping issues of our day, Transgender issues is one, um, but also things about economic justice, the legal system, the way our government functions, where money is allocated. And yes, the Middle East, um, Israel and Palestine is a particularly difficult one because you've got two competing religiously driven groups that both believe God told them that the that piece of desert was ours was and I say that as ours because you know a lot of you know I keep kosher uh some people don't so I'm not just hey I'm you know identity Jewish no I I actually read the book and I mean I talk about it um on Twitch a lot uh, and videos here, but yeah, I, I have two sets of dishes. Like that's a real pain in the ass, but I do it because it's a meditation. The pain in the ass is the point. Hello, Zelda. Um, and, uh, 
you know, I have a, a colleague that's sitting Shiva right now. Another thing that is really important, but every year in the Passover Seder and Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, uh, have been doing this since the 15th century, you end the Passover Seder saying next year in Jerusalem. And then Palestinians say from the river to the sea. That's the same area. That's the problem, right? And both see the other's phrase as a threat. And this is why as much as I believe in the ethics of Judaism and it's brought a lot to my life, I don't like talking about these sorts of issues because there is no trust. And I am more concerned with com combating uh, and reducing both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia here, this community, and then, you know, in North America, in the West in general, because I can do something about that, you know? I can't do anything about, I'm not a citizen. I can't do anything about that. I can't do anything about Israel. I can do something about this. And people don't like that. And I don't care. Because they don't have to like it. You can only work with people who will work with you. And so establishing certain trust building exercises. And this is something I've been doing since the 90s when I fucked up a lot because I was a teenager. But that's the thing. I know how much I fucked up a lot when I was a teenager. But we were actively told not to do some of the things that people do now. You know, we always got told, don't scare the straights. Don't freak the mundanes. Don't get in people's faces. One, because it was a personal safety issue. And that's why I am at odds with certain wings of trans activism right now. Because I see activists as the people that go out and scream at people. I see advocates as the people that go and build the bridges and have the one-on-one -on -one conversations like we did in Canada with marriage equality. That's what they did before there was majority support for marriage equality in Canada. Advocates went MP by MP and convinced them that it was the right thing to do, not the popular thing to do. And that's what I think we have to do with trans issues and trans rights and trans dignity now is we have to have the individual conversations with people because I've seen the numbers. I know that some of these positions are unpopular. And so I'm not going to get in people's faces about it. I'm even changing my language from uh, transphobia to anti-trans because someone being afraid is valid. Someone just being hateful isn't. And, you know, a lot of people in conversations I've been having, this is something I learned because I had conversations. I built trust. I had the conversation. They said, you know, if somebody is agoraphobic, they don't hate open spaces. They're afraid of them. If someone's arachnophobic, they don't hate spiders. They're terrified of them. That's a good point. I can make that adjustment. And that's the first way you build trust. You adapt language so that the people you are so-called reaching across the aisle to are not getting agitated any more than necessary because it's already going to be hard. You know, it's amazing how many people with the Israel Gaza thing, I say, can you just not use certain words like please for my benefit not use certain words 
and they keep using them. And I'm not putting them in this video because I know if I do, the comments will be full of trolls going that word, that word, that word, that word. Unfortunately, there is a lost cause building trust there. And that's a big problem with the area is you've got two sides who just hate each other, don't trust each other, and have been killing each other for about 100 years. We think it goes back to the founding of the state of Israel, but it doesn't. Um, the beginning of the 20th century, there were already huge amounts of violence in that area, which is why the the british ceded control of it and there's there's no nobody's hands are clean there um you know uh jewish terrorist groups were terrible arab groups were terrible um nobody's hands are clean everybody's done bad stuff everybody has legitimate grievance there the thing i've found is that the conversations i have had in person i've got you know a really good friend who uh, self-identifies as palestinian her family's israeli citizens but they're arab um the the conversations we've had in person have been great and compassionate and healing and as you can imagine they sound very different than what's been going on online and the the core of those is you know yeah both sides did bad stuff to each other no 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 if 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 you can't even acknowledge that you're not gonna build trust the reason trust is sacred is because it's vulnerable. Asking someone not to do something means they may just outright ignore you. And if you don't, and, and that's the reason a lot of people give me for not doing it when I tell them, like, tell them you don't like it. Ask them to stop. But what if they don't? Well, then you're not, then they're not your friend. And, you know, that's the fundamental difference between where I'm at in my journey and where a lot of other people are, they, they don't, I think they don't want to have to admit themselves that their friends aren't their friends. And I'm compassionate with that because I, I remember how hard that was to realize that myself. But I've, I've moved on since then and getting rid of the shit heels who were terrible for me means... Yeah, it was lonely, but I've met much better people and gotten closer to some people who were staying away because they didn't like the people I was associated with for good reason. If you've got bad people around you, good people aren't going to trust you as much. That's a really tough lesson I had to learn. I had to learn to exercise more judgment. And part of that is just basic. Look, can you not say that? Because I don't like it and here's why. Here's why is an important part. Like I talk about not liking the word bitch because I think it's lazy. I flag every time the word should comes out of my mouth. Sometimes, yeah, should is appropriate, but it's overused. Um change my language on anti-trans versus transphobic you know but then it's something like if somebody gender critical prefers to be called gender critical than turf all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stand by turf i was a dick about that in the past i didn't realize i was being a dick i realize now that was not productive why am i doing that that's just spite so i stopped and some people would disagree, but they have a turf. No, because I don't consider them a feminist, but they want to be called gender critical. Fine. They don't like the term cisgender. I think getting attached to words one way or another is dumb. I don't like the word bitch because it's lazy, not because I go to pieces over it. Um, but okay. 
They don't like cisgender. They prefer to be called natal woman, natal man. Fine. I don't care. I don't care. This is not a hill I'm going to die on. And some people could be very offended by that. But I'm not, I don't have to persuade people who are already on board. I got to build bridges with people who don't agree with me but are open to being persuaded. And I've had a lot of really productive conversations with people lately who have been confused by the more mainstream trans messaging, muddling whether it's innate or a choice. It's innate. Um, and we've had some really great conversations where they felt better afterwards. And that's awesome. And that's the other thing about building trust is that sometimes you do have to be in 100% listening mode and not needing to be heard mode. And this is hard if you've got any sort of trauma. One of the things I get really depleted by is the amount of, and I love listening. I love learning about people. I am aware I don't, get heard enough where I'm just talking me as a person you know I'm not tailoring a message for some audience just be able to be blah and be weird and talk in the weird way I do I don't spend enough time in in that skin as opposed to the one where I'm just trying to be useful yay Ringo on Blue Eye Samurai um, trying to be useful or productive or manager hat, you know, let's build consensus. Let's keep the team happy. I understand I have a deficit there. I'm working on that. But when you are having a difficult conversation about social issues and you have the opportunity to be an ear for someone, take it. It builds trust. I'm working on my relationship to the way people are like, are you okay sometimes with personal clients? And at first I felt like, oh, wow, I got to stop being a little bit so honest about things because they're worried. I don't want to worry them. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've forgotten your mandate. You are not a therapist. You're a artist coach and you're a, you're a peer counselor and you're a mentor. And those are personal connections. And it is affirming to them to ask me if I am okay. That's allowing them to be a whole person and not just someone who is constantly on the receiving end of help. They are offering, take it. It's a win. It helps both of you. And that is something I had to kind of prop the door open on because of you know the the people and I think everybody can understand this the people that I've let in in the past that I let in too quickly and they didn't deserve it and they burned me with stuff I told them in private um I don't think the people you know, the people close to me now would do that now. And that's a nice feeling. You know, we've had our disagreements and no one goes on on social media and rips each other. And, you know, we I am very vigilant against manipulative team members. And I don't believe people mean to do it, but there's a lot of manipulative behaviors that are not seen for what they are. And so ferreting those out has been a worthwhile time but yeah allowing someone the opportunity to listen helps build their strength and it's not just about what you're giving you have to really be tuned in to receive receive information receive a perspective receive empathy and it's amazing how many people, when talking about these social issues, reject legitimate compassion. Not bullshit. 
not I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, people trying to connect going, now they might not know how you feel. They might be wrong. But they're trying. You know, they're trying to connect to you on a personal level. And that's important for building trust. Now, have you noticed it's all about being vulnerable, receiving all that stuff? It's like, but when do I get to talk? When do I get to make my point? This is not about making your point. This is about building trust. And this is the step that people skip. This is, I believe, why people read things into the things I tweet that are not there. Because, you know, you have to collect information about a person's circumstances and then verify that you understand before you open your mouth and state an opinion. And so many people, I mean, yes, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. And we start less informed with opinions. We all do. You know, we all we all have opinions that um, evolve. My God, every time I think I get a handle on Baldur's Gate 3, it throws me another, another curveball. And I'm like, <laughs> um, it's just so much in that game it's like ah it's this big mess in my brain and that's cool because i mean i'm learning a lot as dev from going through it but it's frustrating and it's way too big and the map navigation um is awful and could be fixed and still i i i think it does deserve a lot of the accolades it's getting both can be true and that nuance is also important extending those olive branches extending you know when i i have to point out that something is reading in a certain way i go out of my way to say i absolutely do not believe you intended it this way i am telling you it landed this way because i don't believe you intended it this way and that is usually taken pretty well by people. Um, I mean, during Gamergate, I was just happy to see people go from feminism as cancer to, you know, sex negative third wave feminism as cancer. I'm like, that, I did that. <laughs> you know, you, you got to pick your battles. But, but that's the thing if you try to just force people if as Aquila says you know you try to coerce people instead of persuade people you often end up pushing people in the direction opposite to where you want to go if you come on with strident language and raw and raw and you know when people say i've mellowed maybe that's the shift because no watch me on twitch i have not mellowed i'm very still raw um but um, I do think that there's there's nothing wrong with me giving someone benefit of the doubt. Giving someone an inch is not giving them a mile. And no, they cannot take a mile. If you set your line here and say, I'm willing to give you this much, and they try to take more, nope. End the conversation by. Because one of the, the postures that's essential for building trust is all you're trying to do is build trust. You're trying to get consensus on a little thing that's building to a bigger thing. That's building to a bigger thing. That's how dipl diplomacy works. You are not trying to convince them of the rightness of your position on the first conversation. You're trying to let them know that you are coming to the table authentically and in good faith, and that's it. And if you need them to agree with you, if you need them to validate you, you will not get that. You're skipping that step. On social issues, 
you do have to be the bigger person if you want good results. You can't be waiting for the other person to just take a whole bunch of abuse and name calling and false accusations of intent. You can't. That's eroding trust. That's not building it. Why would somebody talk to somebody who thinks, you know, you actively support genocide and like dead babies? Something thousands of people accused me of, and it's stupid. You know, just because somebody disagrees with you on tactics doesn't mean they disagree with, you know, where, where the... Uh, where the end result has to be. And we might disagree on the end result in that case, because to me, the status quo in Gaza is untenable. We can't go back to the conditions in that place on October 6th, period, end of story. I, kids with skin rashes and intestinal diseases, no. I'm not okay with that. I'm not. Um, but the idea that you know, if people really think I revel in dead kids, why are they even engaging? That's just bullshit. It doesn't make any sense on its face, which is why I think most of the people saying this to me don't really mean it. They're just trying to shame me. Bye bye. That doesn't build trust. I'm not going to waste my time. Because the people who do give me a hearing, the people who are open to engaging with stuff that does make them uncomfortable, makes everybody uncomfortable. Nobody likes talking about things that involve death or despair or, or poverty or suffering. No feeling person does. And so the people that do give me that time and, and do give me that openness and vulnerability, they're worth enough to me that I don't waste my time on people who aren't ready to do that. And in order to build trust, you do have to be prepared to, to shut some people down because they're wasting your time. So you have more time and you have more energy to devote to the people that are coming to the table in good faith, especially if they don't agree with you. And... You know, that's on top of the don't name call, don't assume, check things out, use intentional dialogue, all that stuff. But remember that trust is built first. Trust is not a, trust is not a, a byproduct of debate. Trust is necessary for dialogue. And so I encourage you to try to build trust before you launch in to the difficult stuff by caring about language, by giving people benefit of the doubt, by validating what you can validate, you know, that I know you're not intending to do this. You seem to be coming at this and mean well, you, you know, you, you don't seem, you know, you, you seem to be coming at this from a good place. That is all goes miles which is why it's so strange to me that more people don't do it you know that's when you have to question what their intents are and, and finding out what someone intents are for a conversation and doubling back to that and restating that of look we're still talking about understanding here right not agreement right okay going back to that first principle for the discussion setting it near the beginning what are you trying to accomplish here? And then going back to it when things are going off the rails or seem to be starting to. That's a really another effective trust building technique as well. So give it a try. Hope you enjoy it. And Trans Awareness Week, hug the trans people in your life. It's It's been a rough time. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for somebody who's but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Or the GoFundMe. All these get you access to the Discord. Thanks for watching and be well.